And President Proctor, go ahead. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good evening and welcome to the San Mateo Foster City School District regular board meeting. And today is December 15th, 2022, and I'm calling the meeting to order at 5.34 p.m. Trustee Corso, would you mind making the translation announcement? Yes, for the last. Bienvenidos, por favor, si ocupan traducción, pueden levantar la mano o también pueden hacer clic en la pantalla donde ven el icono del mundo y ahí pueden cambiar el idioma. Gracias. Thank you. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Look at echo, sorry. Okay, we will go call Trustee Watkins. Here. Trustee Corzo. Here. Trustee Chin. Here. And I am also here. Moving on to item 2C, approval of the agenda for tonight. I motion to approve the agenda. Second. Thank you, Trustee Corzo, for the motion. Trustee Watkins for the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's four yeses. Moving on to item 2C, approval of minutes from October 20th. I have a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you, Trustee Corzo, for the motion and Trustee Chin for the second. All in favor, please unmute and say aye. 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 Okay, that's everybody. Uh, we will move on to item 3A public statements related to non agenda topics. The San Mateo Foster City School Board will not act upon any item that has not been included and publicly posted on the agenda except under limited circumstances as permitted by law. The board may refer matters raised in this form to staff for investigation and action where appropriate. Please limit your statements to three minutes. Is there anyone in the room that would like to make a public comment? No, okay. nobody. Okay. Um, can we please go to the Zoom audience? Hi, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to make a public comment within Zoom, please use the raise hand functionality now. You will have three minutes to make your public comment. Uh, we will start with Francisco. You have your hand raised. I'm going to bring you in as a panelist. Hey, Forrest. Um, I don't know if Francisco is trying to make public comment or needs translation assistance. Uh, in that case, Francisco, I will lower your hand now. If you're making a public comment, can you please raise your hand? Okay, we will move on. If there's any other members in the audience that would like to make a public comment within Zoom, please use the raise hand functionality. And with that, President Proctor, back to you. Thank you. And I'm just repeating. Public statements related to agenda items. Persons Okay, Francisco, I promoted you to a panelist. If you would like to make public comment, you'll have three minutes to do so and begin speaking when you're ready. Okay, I'm gonna lower your hand, Francisco. I'm gonna attempt to reach out to you personally, but with that, President Proctor, I'm gonna pass it back to you. 
Sorry, I think we're getting some signals where I think you're coming in and out and maybe, can you, does, does President Proctor come in loud and clear? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Chen. I'm, I swear. Okay. I'm Tatiana, are you okay? <laughs> Thanks. Left. Public statements related to agenda items, persons will be called on at the appropriate time. We'll go to 3C, which is foundations and committee reports. I'd like to make a report. <laughs> committee reports are there you are. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing hand signals over here. Yeah. Can you come and help me with my technology skills a bit more? Reports from anyone. It's not allowing us to download Zoom. Yes. Any reports? Do we have reports in the agenda? We don't have it. Not today. Okay. Move on. And then we do need to see the FDA team. I'm trying to see. Kathy, there's Kathy Pratt too. Oh, let's go. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. Okay. The reason that I'm joining this meeting is because I'm I want to bring up the uh, the drug abuse in the schools and the vaping. Okay. Um. I've been trying to reach Mr. Ochoa for since June, and I haven't. You know, I attend. You know, so many times. Because I have a granddaughter, you know, she goes to Bowerich Middle School. On that particular school, you know, it, it's been a lot of drugs, you know, activities. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's frustrating because, you know, you know, I'm trying to, you know, to speak to someone from the district's office. And, you know, they, you know, they just, you know, they just never call me back. I left a message to, to, uh, to Dr. Heredia too, and to the, uh, um, to a guy named Dennis, Dennis Hills. And you know, they just don't call me back. And it's really frustrated. And I'm not worried only about my granddaughter. I'm worried about each student. And this, and you know, this is escalating in Abbott Middle School, Borrell Middle School, Bayside Middle School, and now it's in Bowridge. It's it's you know, it's it's it just um to me it's I mean I'm worried about it, it's frustrated. And I'm, a, and, and I'm a little upset about it because I brought it up so many times to the to the vice principal and the principal, you know, Barish Middle School. They say, you know, they have to follow, I mean, a protocol. Uh, but it seems to me, you know, you know, you know, you know, that the protocol is not working. You know, you know, they have to take this, you know, this matter more serious. And 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 honestly speaking, in general, for every student. And 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 I'm going to go to a safety meeting. You know, it's going to be a place in Bowerish, January 5th at 6 p.m. So I'm going to be there. I hope, you know, someone from the district, you know, can be there so I can, I can talk more, you know, more, you know, more about it. And it's, it's I mean, it's just frustrating to me. 
because you know they just say oh you know we're working on it you know we're working on the problem but you know it's it's i mean it's getting worse every day every day that's all i got to say francisco thank you, thank you for your time um, just so that everyone knows, we can't um, comment at this time, but there are many people on this line that will, that will be completely in touch with the email that will make it to the January 5th meeting. So um, hopefully someone will get back to you soon. CSEA and SME updates, please. Hi, everyone. I'm hoping you can hear me. Yay. Yay. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest, I had something else in mind of what I was going to say um, because I went to a meeting yesterday and I was really bothered by it, but um, I've decided I'm not going to talk about anything related to that because I spoke to Diana Tavares today, who was wonderful. So instead of what I was going to say to you all, I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude for our entire human resources department and their quick response to issues when they come up. Um, we meet with her weekly. I can be sitting in there talking about an issue and the director of the department walks through the door. She is that quick to try to get things resolved and she's been nothing but wonderful. So I just want to express my appreciation for all of them over there. Um, and then all I really have is I wanted to um, congratulate Noelia again on um, all of your future endeavors and as well as uh, the remaining members, uh, Sorry, trustees that are staying on our board and our newest one that's joining us. Other than that, hope you all have a wonderful break. Take care. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> good evening, everyone. It's good to see you today. I have just a couple of brief comments for today. First of all, I want to say congratulations and uh, good luck to Trustee Corzo in her next. Uh, position. And I wanted to say congratulations to all of our continuing trustees and our newest trustee, I believe it's Trustee Brooks that will be coming in later uh, this evening. Uh, thank you to uh, our congratulations uh, in all those positions. Uh, in SMEDA right now, uh, we've been working along lately with um, members of CTA and learning a little bit more about community schools, how they're run, uh, how we roll them out, and we're really trying to provide that information, um, some more information to our teachers who are very eager to learn more about this process and making sure that we can have some real transformational change in those schools that are uh, slated to become community schools. Uh, Samina also really we really, uh, members, teachers, we're really eager to interact and collaborate with our administrators and our district staff to ensure the physical and uh, mental safety of all of our students and staff. Um, due to some of the things that have come up recently, we do really want to work collaboratively to find ways to uh, make sure that we are having uh, trust, uh, that we are having um, safe and school uh, safe schools where people can feel uh, open to discuss some of the things that are that are happening within um, the walls of our, of our campuses. I just want to say um, I think that we are very uh, welcome to have a come upcoming break. Enjoy the holidays to everybody and um, looking forward to working to get along together in the new year. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, congratulations, um, Trustee Corzo. We're very proud of you. Um, and uh, good evening, Board of Trustees, um, Superintendent Ochoa. Um, happy holidays to everyone. Um, we're super excited to go on our break. Um, and I have tonight with you um, a special guests. We have our student council. Um, our kids are ready to um, introduce themselves and tell you why they love Fiesta Gardens. My name is Mia Rada and I'm the school ecology coordinator and I'm thankful and I'm glad that um, our school has all great teachers. Hi, my 
name is Scarlett Favey and I'm the girl president of Fiesta Gardens. And one thing that I'm proud of about FGIS is how we celebrate different cultures through a variety of festivals and events such as Carnaval and Fiesta Hispana. Hi, I'm Elise Tennant. I'm vice principal here, no, first president here at FGIS Student Council. Something I'm proud about this school is that we learn and study different cultures in very interesting ways, such as, well, festivals like Carnival. So Carlisle, I am a fifth grade um, representative, and one thing I love about Fiesta Gardens is how welcoming it is. Hi, my name is Gabriela Rendon Santana. I'm the activities coordinator. And one thing I'm proud of our school is the time we get to spend here with our friends. Hi, my name is Alison Godinez. I'm a representative of student council and I like how we have spirit weeks because it makes a happy environment in our school. Hello, my name is Isaac Neal Padgett. I take the role as boy president in this school. I love how safe it is, and since it's safe, it makes it fun to learn. Hi, my name is Edna Romero Aguilar. Something I'm proud about this school is that we get to learn different languages. I'm again, I'm a fifth grade representative, and something I like about this school is how the Fiesta Fargo um, program is fun and rewarding. Okay, there you have it. A uh, report out from our student council. Um, they came up with their own. The prompt was, what do you love about Fiesta? So there you go. Have a happy holiday and be safe. Come right, Fiesta Gardens. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And congratulations, Trustee Corto. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Doug Harris and I'm the principal of Audubon Elementary School in Foster City. Last night, many of our students participated in the script, script spelling bee, and I wanna give a special thank you to President Proctor for being one of our judges. We had over 50 students participate in the spelling bee. Our senior spelling bee went 11 rounds, and like any other competition, there could only be one official winner to move forward to represent Audubon as the school champion. Congratulations goes to Mandy Liu and all the Spelling Bee participants. You know, on my way home, I was reflecting about the evening. Uh, competition made me think that no matter how well our students were prepared for the Spelling Bee, they couldn't predict the words that they'd be asked to spell. And some of the words weren't even on the study list, but they persevered and they did their best. Before the Spelling Bee began, I shared with them that no matter how well they placed tonight, what was really important was this experience, that they were putting themselves out there. And we were proud of all their accomplishments. I have to admit, watching each student come to the mic, I got a nervous feeling myself. It made me feel better knowing that even though they were standing alone in front of the mic, our brave Spelling Bee contestants, contestants had a team of supporters around them rooting for them. We may not always see our team, but they are there. We are truly stronger together. As we prepare for the break and on the behalf of the San Mateo Foster City Administrators Association, I wanna take a moment to celebrate our wonderful Foster City team. Uh, San Mateo Foster City team, gotta make it all together. Um, Taking on a strategic plan, especially in year one, is an enormous challenge. It takes a lot of communication, a lot of planning, a lot of collaboration, and a dedicated team to make it happen. I wanna start by thanking our teachers and our TOSAs who have engaged in extensive professional development around equity, instructional practices, all aimed to increase better outcomes for our students. We've had to shift our thinking, and in many ways, it's been challenging at times, but you have all remained committed to this work. Big appreciations goes to our counselors, psychologists, and other specialists who contribute to our school care teams and provide targeted academic and social emotional support for students. I wanna thank our classified staff, 
you know, being an administrator, I have a front row seat to the diversity of classified positions that support students and teachers. From our office team to the maintenance, operation and custodial teams, from food services to technology, and all the paraeducators who provide educational services such as library, PMT, annex care, special education services, and more. All of you directly impact our students and we truly could not do our jobs without you. Thank you families for everything you do to support your students and our staff. Your partnership is key for all of our accomplishments and we've already achieved a lot already. And we know with your partnership, we're gonna have great achievement in the years to come. To Superintendent Ochoa, board members, district leadership, thank you for setting this vision of achievement, equity, wellness, and for supporting us in this journey. And I wanna thank our students who have proven yourselves to be dedicated to your learning and committed to kindness. I recognize that being a student is not an easy feat. Sometimes you feel overwhelmed, but you stepped up to the challenge. As with all of us, sometimes we made mistakes along the way. That's part of growing up. What's important is that you have used these opportunities and learning experiences to become a better you. We celebrate all of your accomplishments and we want you to know that you inspire us every day. We are truly stronger together. Hashtag all in one. Happy holidays, San Mateo Foster City. Thank you so much. Wow, that was loud. I appreciate the updates. And it was great to see the students from Fiesta Gardens. Sorry, a little echo here. Are there any other announcements from board members? I guess I'll just announce that I am having a lot of mixed emotions about this being my last meeting. And I think uh, I'll have a chance to speak a little later, but um, just a, a truly heartfelt thank you to everyone that's been on this journey with me these past five years. Okay, we will move on to Item 3F, Superintendent Report. All right, well, we have um, a lot of guests here tonight. I'm really glad that you're able to be here for this. I'm gonna reserve my remarks uh, in recognition of one of the people that's up on this dais. And the person that I'm referring to is our school board clerk on her way to represent the city of San Mateo and parts of Belmont Redwood Shores as a board of supervisor for San Mateo County. And that is Noelia Corzo. Give her a round of applause, you guys. Um, myself and other members of the board want to make some remarks about Trustee Corzo. Um, we do have some awards for her that we want to present to her and we want to be able to take some photographs as well. So. I'm going to start my remarks here from the computer, but in just a minute, we'll move over uh, on the other side of the dais and we have some awards for you. I know you have your son with you, so we want to make sure he gets in the pictures. Um, our coordinator of communications is running off to get his good camera, so we make sure we have some good photos from tonight. Um, but I think what the community um, has seen uh, since 2017, since you joined this board, is they've seen a very passionate advocate for children. And uh, during your tenure on this board, there have been um, way too many meetings to count. I, I actually went back and start and, and did that, and I just stopped when it hit 150, and I'm not kidding. I hit, oh, that's now you're talking to different math. I'm just talking about number of meetings, right? And, and they've seen you put the work in for this community and they've seen you uh, take something that um, on the board level, it begins almost like a kernel, like it's so small. The piece of feedback that one of the members of the board, in this case yourself, 
you'll get something from a parent or from a community member or maybe your child who will pose a challenge to you or ask you a question. Um, and within months, it becomes an idea that becomes an agenda item that becomes work that you're doing on behalf of kids in the school district. And that's very much your story on this board. It has been um, a story of somebody who has a passion for bringing equity and bringing really emancipatory learning experiences to kids, things that take kids who you know need more um, support and really giving them that support in the most impactful way possible. And um, in just a minute, we'll, we'll be able to uh, give you this recognition, but it's, it's with very, very deep gratitude and heartfelt um, consideration that we are going to award you a distinguished service award uh, for your service as a member on this board. Um, and I think it's very, very well deserved. I know you're my colleague sitting to the left here, um, uh, board vice president, uh, Shara Watkins, I want to cede some of my time to you and, and give you an opportunity to also speak to your colleague. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so Noelle and I have been working together on the board since for five years now, wild. We met on the campaign trail in 2017 in, oh, in, in this room. Yeah. I don't officially remember that, but yes, um, <laughs> aligned on our commitment and focus on equity and really ensuring that our district wasn't producing predictable patterns of achievement. And, you know, as Superintendent Ochoa spoke to, and I'm sure others will speak to that Noelia's commitment to students and families in our district, whose voices are often not heard or not represented is unwavering, a commitment and perspective that I know you're gonna continue to bring with you on your next journey. It's honestly kind of surreal <laughs> to be saying, Goodbye to my partner in crime um, in this work to change outcomes, the good kind of thing, right? Um, you know, I have deep respect and admiration and gratitude for every single one of the people sitting on this dais. Um, and by just the nature of our individual identities and experiences, you know, no, that Noelia and I share, um, you know that experience and relationship is unique. And um, despite what I think some people in our community feel like, we do not always agree. Um, it's something that rarely makes it, its way to the camera and to the YouTube live stream, but we are steadfast in our core values, in challenging one another, in talking it out when we don't agree, and in sometimes agreeing to disagree but I could not be more proud of the work that we have done together and the work that you've done, it's like trying to, from the equity task force to the sanctuary task force, to all of the work around the North Central School, to addressing the school to prison pipeline, to uh, addressing inequitable access and achievement in math. Um, you have poured your soul into fighting what's best for our kids, for lifting up voices that have not previously been welcomed in our district, and for many times wearing a target because moving systems is really hard and people don't always like it. And let's face it, when you are a person of color in our community, it still means that people hold you to a different standard whether or not they admit it. Um, and throughout all of that work, you know, we've also become best friends and I will always cherish the relationship that we have built and the role that you've played in my life as I have transitioned to becoming a mother on this board and dealt with a lot of exceptionally challenging situations. Most recently, you know, um, my little one's health challenges and I just um, am so grateful for the role that you play in our lives. And, this work is challenging and it can often be unforgiving and there's no way, no way that I could have done it without you. And I don't know how I will do it without you. And um, I was thinking about this quote where 
some people come into our lives and quickly go, and some stay for a while. We put prints on our hearts and we get that heart. And that is who you said to me. So I am going to miss you immensely. I'm really proud of you and really looking forward to seeing that the work that you do for our county. Love you. Thank you. I love you too. Okay, I have some words that I wrote down. <laughs> and these are from my heart, but I didn't want to totally cry and be a mess. So I wrote them down, but they're from my heart. Um, Noelia, I'm so proud of you. And at the same time, I'm really going to miss you. Um, I'm going to miss working with you on the school board. I've learned so much from you. I remember coming to the candidate forum in this room knowing nothing about the school board, knowing nothing about any of the candidates. Um, and I listened to you talk about, or I listen to you answer the questions, but also share your perspective. Um, and that is when you won me over. You won my vote, but also um, at, in the same sense, hearing from you and Shara, both um, you had, you both talked about things I had never, like I had never known about and I never had heard before. Equity and representation were just not part of my vocabulary um, and, and my world. And it's embarrassing to say it now, but just know that you made an impact. Um, you changed the way I viewed education and community and making sure that everyone everyone's voice is heard. So we're all here to do what's best for kids. Um, I continued to keep up with the school board meetings after that. I watched you follow through on what you said you were going to do. You challenged a system that needed to be challenged, but wasn't necessarily ready for that challenge. You were brave and you spoke up. You inspired people, you made people mad, you made people uncomfortable, but the kids in our school district benefited. And that's what this is all about, doing what's best for kids. You inspired me to run for the school board. I don't look like you. I didn't grow up with the same circumstances as you. I'm 10 years older than you, um, but your leadership made me believe that I could join you in this work and help do what's best for kids. Um, I watched you lead during COVID. You thought about our most vulnerable students and families and advocated for what they truly needed. You fought hard to keep our educators safe during those late night meetings that turned into early mornings. Over the years, I watched you patiently advocate advocate for the kids in North Central and the entire North Central community. You stood up against racism, unconscious biases, gun violence, and the school to prison pipeline. You advocated for mental health support and for more just discipline policies in our schools. You questioned data and outcomes and never settled for less than what's best for kids. I wanna give a quick shout out to Mikey. I know you're in middle school now and all the, at this age, moms are just not cool, um, but, I wanted to tell you that your mom is the coolest and we owe you a huge thank you for sharing her with us in our school district. Um, she has worked hard for the past six years doing what's best for kids. Over the past year, yeah, sorry, hold on, can you hear me still? Okay, over the past year while you were running for county supervisor, I saw a really ugly side of people. You stayed strong and you kept your focus and positivity on making our community a better place. I hope that your new colleagues on the Board of Supervisors know what a special person you are. I hope they become inspired to join you in doing what's best for San Mateo County. Um, Noelia, thank you for your service. I love you. I can't wait to see you in action in our county and um, representing us in District 2. So thank you. Thank you. <sighs> oh boy. Um, <clears throat> well, I really appreciate my other co-trustees who've written everything down, but you know me, <laughs> you know me, I'm not, I'm not as uh, one to write it all down. So um, I have, uh, I've gone over my head a, a few different ways it's going to go. So I'm just going to go with it because uh, trustee uh, uh, Watkins and uh, President Proctor actually said some really, really great things. So I'm not going to go over all the accomplishments and everything else that we've been through uh, together. And, and um, it is well said before. Um, it's been like Trustee Watkins is, I know served with you the longest, um, me the second longest over four years. Uh, and we've had some crazy times. We've gone through 
COVID hell and back, right? I mean, it, it has been some really crazy times. Um, I want to say that when I have personally seen you grow, both as a person and as a policymaker, and I've learned so much from you as well. Um, there have been so many different things that we we don't always agree on, like, and that doesn't make it to the cameras either. Right? We we don't agree, but we've had conversations, and you've opened my eyes to different things that you know that I haven't seen before, or thought of before, and I really appreciate that. Um, I'm extremely proud of who you have become and, and what you have done on this board. And I'm, I'm absolutely honored to have served with you on this during this time. Um, I know I, you, if, I've used this before just recently, so bear with me, but maybe not everyone has heard this, but um, a while ago, Superintendent um, Naochoa, but Dr. Joan Roses um, shared with us when she was going through her Stanford classes, um, that poem, the poem that talked about black and white and gray. And it was really applicable to us because for what we do on the board, there's not many very, very, not very many decisions that are black and white. There just aren't. A lot of them are gray. And it's the gray that we live in. It's the gray that we thrive in. That's what we do as policymakers. We, this is, we live in the gray and you, you have thrived in the gray. And now I'm so excited for the fact that you're moving on and moving up and, be, and I'm very proud to, for you to represent San Mateo, Foster City and parts of Belmont um, in, our, in our county. So um, I will miss you tremendously. Um, so I just want to thank you for your service. Thank you. Okay, is it my turn now? Okay. Um, so thank you all for being here. Um, first and foremost, I think I, um, I want to give a shout out to my parents. Um, they're not here right now, but um, I hope that they'll watch this at some point. <laughs> um, you know, I remember um, my mom taking me to school uh, at Turnbull um, when I was a little one and my dad just telling me repeatedly over the phone as I was growing up, like, do good in school, do good in school, do, do, do good in school, <laughs> just like, you know, um, pushing that point really hard. And um, it really was my experience in education that, you know, what was, uh, I think, unique in that I saw so many kids around me have different experiences. So many kids from my neighborhood have different experiences. And while I, you know, threw myself into reading, into books, and you know, truly enjoyed that. I saw other kids around me really struggling to to read and to thrive in school. And when I became a mom, I was blessed in that my son was with me at San Francisco State, and he got to be an amazing, you know, in an amazing early childhood education program there. And I felt the difference when we had to leave that program and you know, we went to a, a different program and it, it kind of like opened my eyes to how important education is. And I felt the difference, right? Like a really high quality education and program. And then um, I didn't qualify for, Mikey didn't qualify because I made like, I swear, I think it was like less than a dollar over the limit of, you know, the, 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 um, the limit, the income limit for the subsidized preschool program and so I had to like, go all the way to Daly City to find a program that was affordable and accessible to us um, and so when he started his school um, when he started school here at San Mateo Foster City School District 
and I learned about you know some of the disparities that you know were were around when I was growing up and were still around I just I just couldn't accept it you know and I I know and you know we heard public comment today and we still have so much work to do and you know we have thousands of kids almost 11,000 um which is lower than you know than before for many different reasons but you know I think about I have tried to really put myself in the shoes of every single person in our school district, whether you're staff, whether you're a student, whether you're a parent. Um, and, and in a sense, like we most, we all, most of us like do get to be in each of those shoes, right? Um, we are part of this system. We are leading it. We are like parents in this system. Um, for me, you know, I was once a student here and the work is never done. But there are some things that I'm really proud of, and um, and there's also a list that I'm gonna go over with each of you when I'm a constituent and no longer just see <laughs> some things that were left unfinished. That um, you too, Diego. <laughs> that um, I that you know I had this whole plan for when I would when I became president of the school board in 2020 and COVID through us for for a loop and you know just wasn't possible in that same way but um I do want to thank each of you and I and I will um individually in just a second but before I do I also want to thank Mikey he is my sunshine and my biggest motivation and also, you know, I, it's really hard being a board member and spending so much time away from, from your kids and, um, you know, having to miss certain, certain events because you have a board meeting and that takes priority, right? Um, and also just all of the, you know, had I not been a board member, there would have been certain situations where maybe I would have been a stronger advocate um, and that's I think another reality that as trustees we we have to um, you know be really mindful of that line that we are parents but we are also leaders in the school district and we have uh, certain um, privileges and power that come with that that you know um, we always need to be mindful and respectful of but I do, I do, um, Dr. Joan Rosas is not here, but, you know, I worked with her for three years and I do want to appreciate that time. I, uh, so many of you that are here uh, with us, some of you are newer, some of you have been here a long time and have seen kind of the shift in, in our school district. And um, thank you all for, for your, you know, your part in the journey with me. and. Um, I want to thank Diego as well. I, I will say that it felt really different when you started. Um, you know, we we had different kinds of conversations. I remember just like every time I'd meet with you, I'd be like, well, I've been thinking about this and and this happened and this and this family called me and said this and and um Diego, like either in that same meeting or at the next meeting we had, would just like be like, oh, well, I looked at all of this and here's some data. And, and it was just like, I think the work became really fast paced. And then they got to a certain point where um, and, and, you know, let me say again, right, the work is not done, but where I was like, okay, like we are doing community engagement and family engagement in a way that we hadn't done before. We have these board and community workshops, like there's these systems in place now that um, really put me at ease. And, you know, they don't capture everyone, right? I'm also a parent. I can't tell you how many, like, I, like you get, you know, tons of emails and you're gonna miss a couple, right? I have some um, events and, 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 you know, Parents and families uh, tend to do that when they're really busy as well. Um, 
So my point was that thank you for leading this work. And I will say like, if I didn't feel like the school district was in good hands, I would have never considered running for board of supervisors. And that goes for all of you. Um, yeah, so thank you, Diego. Thank you uh, for all of the work that you've done. It's been challenging at times and it will continue to be, but I know, I know you're here for the kids and um, I'm grateful for that. And Shara. <laughs> I don't know if people really believe that we are not the same, <laughs> but we really are. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's been an amazing journey uh, by your side in this work. And um, I feel like you know, we, we are family and I, I love your girls so much. And um, I'm grateful for all of the, you know, I remember when, when we kind of first started and, and you were pregnant with Kaya, how I would go to your house every week and we'd go over our packet together and we would discuss and we wouldn't agree on everything, right? <laughs> um, but so much so that I felt like when Kaya was born, she knew me because like she just heard me talking outside, you know, like she heard me from inside your belly talking. <laughs> um, and, you know, there have been issues that we don't agree on, but we really try to work through things and, um, you know, be a united front. Um, Thank you for pushing me. You have uh, given me an example of what it looks like to be organized, effective, data-oriented, all of these things that um, were not, and probably still aren't <laughs> my strengths. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I really like to think that as a board, right? Like it's all about balance and we all bring our gifts and um, I appreciate yours and, I appreciate how um, you've influenced me and pushed me to be better. And um, I don't plan on, on that changing. So thank you. And Allison, <laughs> I want you to know that it has been so amazing to work so closely with you and be able to feel super comfortable and um, be able to like be myself and then see you be yourself and be hilarious. Allison has jokes, y'all. You don't even know. <laughs> um, and so uh, dedicated to the community, you know, Foster City is an amazing city, very diverse, lots of passionate views. And, um, you know, you represent all kids, but also, um, you know, the amount of work and time that you put into doing things like being a judge for a spelling bee. I'm like, how many kids were there? How many hours did that take? I wonder. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you're part of Rotary. You just do so much work. You have so many gifts. And I, you know, we also haven't agreed on every single vote. And and we shouldn't, right? We're not supposed to. Um, but I, I really appreciate that even when, you know, we didn't necessarily, necess necessarily agree on an issue, there was always respect and, you know, uh, a clear um, dedication to being a united front and to being like a true ally in the work. And, um, also, you know, I feel like we are lifelong friends and um, I want to appreciate your family because the past year you've taken a lot of time away from them to, to support me in, um, in many ways. And when I got COVID in 2020, you brought me this like beautiful gift bag that had like tissue and tea and honey and vitamin C and, and just, you know, you're such a thoughtful, caring person. And um, I appreciate it so much.
So thank you. And Ken. <laughs> Ken's worried over here. Ken's like, what is she going to say? <laughs> Ken, I, you know how I remember Ken and I just, Ken, before he, before we had the vacancy, or maybe I don't even know when it was, but he just used to come to our board meetings and sit in the back and he would never talk to anyone. So I was always like, who is that man that just sits there and doesn't talk to anyone? <laughs> but he was doing his homework and it all made sense when I realized that, you know, he had worked for the city of San Mateo and um, that he had all of this background in um, planning and public works and whatever other things you're an expert in. <laughs> So many thick facilities, I don't know, all of these things. <laughs> um, and it was just clear to me, like when you first applied that, again, right, you, I, I've mentioned balancing and uh, everyone bringing their own gifts and your gifts were unique. And we also, I think, have a different way of approaching the work, which, um, again, I think is a strength. And I'm going to miss you. And I will say that it's been really fun to have you like tap me and be like, take a breath, Noelia. Or not not like say it out loud, but like give me the look of like, take a breath, breathe. Um, this, I don't know how many years we've sat next to each other. It's, has it only been this past year? No, right? How did that happen? <laughs> um, but yeah, ultimately, uh, I want to thank your family as well for um, supporting you and being here. And I know that, you know, running for um, re-election was something that, you know, ha you put a lot of thought into. But I know that I, you know, I really try to <laughs> influence that because I know how much we need you here. Um, so thank you for bringing all your gifts to the school district and to the kids. Oh, I will say that Ken is like super underrated. Like he never will say, he very, very like rarely talks about how much volunteering he actually does in our schools. And, you know, then I find out that he's like, like being a play, not a playground, a yard monitor at Burrell and like doing all of these things that I had no idea that he did. Um, so thank you for being so dedicated and for, uh you know being committed to continuing the work and you also are a lifelong friend so expect to hear from me and even if you don't answer me or call me back then I'll just tell Allison to call you <laughs> um so thank you and let's see yeah I want to thank all of the staff um I see Julie MacArthur here and she was SMEDA president for four and a half, I think, four and a half. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't realize that. <laughs> yes. Um, but I remember, I, I don't know if I remember the exact time that we met each other, but I remember when I was on the campaign trail in 2017, there was a meeting that I went to and I remember you, you know, adv advocating for teachers and helping me understand a different perspective to, you know, what I saw on the dais. And I actually really believe that, you know, in order to get the best solutions, you need to hear from people that are on different, you know, sides of, of the issue. And um, thank you for inviting me to the lion's den, I always call it the lion's den, <laughs> to the SMEDA governing council, me council meetings in the beginning of my time on the board um, when there was a lot of passionate, there were many passionate teachers that had many things that they wanted to, um, to lift up and to advocate for. And I felt honored and a little bit scared <laughs> to be on the receiving end of all of that. But I, I really did my best to support teachers and um and thank you for being a friend and um an advocate for teachers and for kids so I feel like I've been talking forever now 
which I have. Yeah, I guess, you know, some people say that I ramble, maybe it's true. <laughs> but I guess to sum it all up, um, this is really bittersweet for me. It's officially my last school board meeting and the end of a five year journey that I feel really blessed to um, have been a part of. And um, I'm grateful to all of the kiddos and their excitement for learning. And I truly, I do feel like this school district um, is in you know, a better place than it was five years ago. And I like to think that I had a little bit to do with that. So um, I just want everyone to know I'm 100% committed to continuing to support our kids in our school district. And I will just be doing so in a different role. So expect to hear from me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be um, really supportive of the big lift and I hope that our school district can be a part of it in the future. So thank you all. And I will wrap up my, I don't know, was that 30 minutes? Probably 30 minute mile <laughs> for the last time, okay? It's the last time I get to ramble on the diet. So I'm gonna take it <laughs> on this one. Thank you. And expect to hear from us as well, Supervisor. Um, I want to just open up in case there's anybody that would like to make any public comments, either on Zoom or in the room. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there in case there's anyone that feels inclined at this time. Do, do you want to come up here? We have uh, Julie MacArthur here. because I promised my son I would take him out to dinner and I just missed my exit I could not not come and just wish you well in person like I said one of the very first things I did as community president was I got to endorse you and Shara and um, it's probably one of the things I'm most proud of as community president because I know that it impacted teachers in a really positive way it impacted students in a really positive way um, I couldn't be more excited for you in your next role um, and I just want to say I love you and I'm super excited to see what you do next. Um, I'm a little sad. Um, during COVID, I'll share one of my favorite little things to do was um, to text Noelia during board <laughs> meetings and see if I could get her to crack a smile. So um, I did send her one last, couldn't resist taking one last opportunity to send you just a little quick text and tell you I'm so proud of you, so excited for you. And I'm really grateful for everything that you did um, for teachers and for students. So with that, I will let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, board members, uh, Superintendent Ochoa, um, Noelia, your tenure here in the district uh, has been so inspiring. Um, and I stand here to represent uh, the San Mateo Foster City Administrators Association. Um, in front of you, you will notice uh, <laughs> a small gift um, uh, on behalf of our <clears throat> administrators. It was literally, uh, I collected words and phrases that our site principals, uh, coordinators, you know, our, a lot of our administrators uh, shared and wanted uh, uh, you to see, you know, how we believe in you and, and what we think of when we think of Noelia. Uh, so there was a lot of amazing terms there that you can, you know, <laughs> remind yourself when, when you're, when you're out doing great things and you know you're having some challenges your way uh hopefully that will be a reminder of the great work uh and the great values that that you represent uh not only for yourself and your family but for all of your constituents uh here in the county um i, I think a couple of the words on there uh for members who can't see either online empowerment um can you read a couple of them? There's just some really, sure. really, really good ones on there. The big ones. The big yes. Justice, change, role model, social justice, compassionate, advocate, 
representation, positive, driven, caring, inspiring, hardworking, ally, empathetic, raza, equity. <laughs> and I think one of my favorite ones is mi gente. Yes, right? mi gente. You're right. That's I the love biggest that. one. And I... <laughs> That's the one that really gives me chills down my spine uh, because ultimately you are equity centered, you are student centered, and you know those, right, who need our most support, who need our most compassion. Um, and so uh, this is why our uh, San Mateo Foster City Administrators Association um, was really behind you uh, as you were running. Uh, and personally speaking, thank you for giving me my first canvassing experience. I had, shout out to Julie, we were out there <laughs> knocking on doors. Uh, uh, and on behalf of the Administrators Association, thank you. Um, we cannot thank you enough for all of your advocacy. Um, they feel it uh, at the sites, um, well, back with their communities. Um, and we're just really excited uh, to see you journey through and, and expand your reach and, and your support uh, uh, because I know our students and our community and our families will be better for it. So thank you. Yes, we have a hand raised for us. Would you mind um, bringing Dale on? Hi, Noelia. Um, this is Dale Rogers Island. I am so deeply grateful uh, for our partnership across these last five years. I um, I felt like you were advocating at a board level and I was advocating at a student and family level. And I feel like because you were there, our families were so much better. Served. I'm so grateful for our friendship. And um, I, I am excited and truly elated uh, that you will be in a position um, to support more families more broadly. So congratulations, you will be missed. Thank you. Okay, um, do we have some pictures and things to celebrate with? We have some awards to give, so I'm gonna ask the board to join me up front um, and I'm gonna ask Mikey to join us. Yeah. 
Yeah, All right, Mike, you get to hold that because she has one more award. Okay. <laughs> you can get to hold that. Let's oh, come okay. back so the audience online can see what you're doing. Okay. This is a separate award. Mm -hmm. And this award is uh, being presented to you by a uh, group of people that you care a great deal about. Um, <laughs> one of your partners in that team, <laughs> one of your partners in that team, Paul, just a few minutes ago who publicly recognized you and thank you for what you did in, in your service to create something that never existed before because you saw a need that existed. And um, this is a recognition award presented. I'm going to read their earmark. It's presented to Noelia Corzo in sincere appreciation for your dedicated leadership and service to the sanctuary this past year. And the presented to Fox City State. I think maybe right after the oath of office, because I think it'll be fun for Noelia to and, and Mikey to see the oath. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, welcome back. We can now move on to item four, the proposed consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered by the board to be routine and will be enacted by the board in one motion in the form listed below. There will be no discussion on these items prior to the time the board votes on the motion unless members of the board, staff, or public request specific items be removed and discussed from the consent agenda. The superintendent and staff recommend approval of all consent items. Movement of any recommended consent item is appropriate at this time. Are there any board members that would like to move anything? Uh, Forrest, can we check with the, anyone in the audience would like to move any items from the consent agenda? Okay, Forrest, can we check with people on Zoom? If there are any members in the audience of Zoom that would like to remove a, a item from the consent agenda, please use the raise hand functionality now. There are no members in Zoom that would like to remove a consent item. President Proctor, back to you. Thank you so much. We are ready for a motion. I motion to approve the consent. Wait, what are we doing? Yeah. Yes, the consent. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll second it. Thank you. Um, all in favor, please unmute and say aye. 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 Okay, that was everybody. The consent agenda has been approved. We are now moving on to item five, where we will recess for the regular meeting and convene to the annual organizational meeting, starting with ceremonial swearing in of trustees. This is a very important uh, evening, as members of this community know. Uh, an election was held last month. Um, there are a lot of excited people in this room about the direction that this school district is headed. We have a, a new trustee join, joining our board. Uh, she's in the audience in a few minutes. She'll be up here with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we have two uh, current trustees, one our current school board president and 
another one of our current members who had been reelected to this board. And so uh, we have members of their family who are here to um, be a part of the of the actual wearing in and others who are here to watch and cheer on their their, their mom or dad or their spouse. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to invite uh, Trustee Chin and Board President Proctor up to the front here with me. We're going to invite our newest trustee, Latisa Brooks, up to stand up front with me in a minute because though the voters have spoken and are uh, the, uh, elected to the board, you actually are going to swear an oath of office to officially become members of the board. And uh, that's going to happen now. So please join me up.
this is my favorite board. Like, <laughs> so yeah, this is like the best stuff. This, this is family. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Yeah, I have a copy here too. You guys have no problem. So the first <laughs> time, Joan, Joan read it. You know, and then last time, I watched it. This time, I did it. Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of California. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duty. Discharge the duty on which I am about to enter. I mean, do we do? Yeah, don't we do one picture with everybody in your board? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? That's good. Yeah. Later. Right, right after this. Is that okay? Oh, that's fine. Oh, you, you can. Well, let's do it now since you have the camera set up. Let's do that. Yeah. Come on up. Let's take a picture with all the inductees. We'll take two. Diego, you got one? one with you, one without yeah. you. <laughs> hey, you're still on the board. Tonight. You're still on the board tonight. <laughs> we'll do one next time. Yeah. Everybody who has. Okay, concerns. okay, you're right. You're on board. Um, me, yeah, so we'll move on to item 5B, election of officers. And if I may, I would like to nominate Trustee Shara Watkins as president. So I will make that motion. And I will second. Okay, thank you um, to myself for the motion. And to the court's open second. Um, all in favor, please unmute and say aye. 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 Okay, that was, that was all. all five of us. So congratulations, President Watkins. Ryan, too. I would like to nominate Trustee Chin as Vice President. I'll second that. 
All those in favor, unmute and say aye. 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 We will now nominate a clerk and a trustee representative. So are there any motions for clerk? I would like to nominate Latisa Brooks for clerk. I'll second that. Should we tell Latisa how much work we <laughs> Yeah, I, I think yeah. All, all the huge, all the responsibilities. <laughs> Lots of you're going to be signing a lot of pieces of paper. Thank you, Trustee Chen. No, second. Second. Okay, I'm going to get into this. <laughs> Somebody captured that. All those in favor, I'm going to say aye. 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 And with that, we'll make a motion to nominate Trustee Proctor as trustee representative. Second. All those in favor, I'm going to say aye. 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 That's our board reorg. Transition of board of power. Thank you very much. Um, we will now move on to. Am I hearing an echo? Uh, Welcome, Welcome to the presidency, presidency where you hear echoes. echoes. We'll move on to appointment appointments by myself. Um, so I will go through the list of committees, and I made some preliminary decisions about who would hold various roles. But if folks have questions or concerns after I go through the list, let me know. Uh, Superintendent Ochoa, historically, we have nominated uh, superintendent as secretary to the board. Are we going to continue with that practice? Wonderful. Congratulations. Allison, I have Trustee Proctor have you down as legislative representative, uh, though something we should probably come back to. I'm not sure if that role has been one that we've been um, executing. So let's talk about that, Superintendent Ochoa. The liaison to the San Mateo City Council will be myself and Trustee Chin. Trustee Chen, you got that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liaisons to the Foster City City Council will be myself and Trustee Proctor. Liaison to the San Mateo Foster City Education Foundation will be Trustee Chin. Liaison to the PTA uh, Council will be Trustee Brooks. Liaison to the district's uh, Special Education District Advisory Council will be Trustee Chin. Liaison to DLAC will be Trustee Brooks, Sanctuary Task Force, Trustee Proctor, Equity Task Force will be myself, and Home for All Committee will be Trustee Proctor. There are two committees that I do not think, uh, while trustees were appointed to them previously, were not attending, which is the Communications Committee and LMI. So let's, uh, trust Superintendent Ochoa, should we keep those off the list for now? Okay, great. Um, we will likely um, add our new appointed trustee as, so some of these historically have had more than one person attend. And so we can, this gives opportunity for our new trustee to add on to some of these committees where there have historically been two representatives. Hmm. Okay. Any questions, concerns about those appointments? Right. We, mm -hmm. I just want to, um, I would in when when I move on from this role, it'd be great to have a D two liaison. So it did exist before with Carol Groom, but it wasn't. I wonder if that falls under a legislative representative. I think that might fall under a legislative representative. I think it's a position we have. We created a few years ago, and I don't think we've kind of kept it up. So this is a good opportunity to do that. Um, and that was Trustee Proctor. Right. Okay. So we will close our annual organization meeting and reconvene to our regular meeting. But I would propose a 10 minute break so that we can 
think there's maybe some cookies and a little bit of celebration of our um, swearing in of our trustees in addition to saying our goodbyes to Trustee Corso. We'll be back at 7.10. We are returning back from our brief break. We are going to return to item 3C, which is foundation and committee reports, because we have um, an update from Sonja Tappen uh, um, uh, from the Ed Foundation. So Sonja, come on up. Ready? Okay. So thank you, students, families, and district educators for working as a community and making this such a wonderful, happy, and healthy year. Thank you for those who support us in the local community, corporations, foundations. Together, we can dream big for our students. The gala <coughs> event, Night at the Museum, on October 21st was a great success, as together we raised over $100,000 for the support of the arts. And I want to thank everyone who donated and who hosted person in person events for this um, great occasion. I want to say thank you to the community who voted and supported Measure K. The funds are being uh, received, and we are currently underway in making improvements for quality outdoor edu outdoor playgrounds and equipment. So thank you for your continued support. Coming up, we'd like to invite the whole community to the seventh annual San Mateo Foster City Education Foundation Readathon. It's a loved event and it's happening on January 20th through February the 3rd in 2023. We look uh, for the family letter in your student's homework folder that's coming soon. And January the 20th, we're gonna have the kickoff in the San Mateo Public Library. And on January 21st, we'll have the kickoff at the Foster City Public Library. Volunteers are always welcome to make the event even more fun. And tonight I would want to welcome a special guest. He's a leader in our community and an environmental champion. His name is Zach Thorpe and he goes to Beach Park Elementary. And I would like to invite him to speak. Hello. Um, my name is Zach Thorpe. I am a fifth grader from Beach Park Elementary, and um, thank you for letting me participate tonight. Um, I started the sneaker fundraiser at the end of October, um, and I was mainly just trying to raise money for Beach Park, but you know, um, I had a goal of like a thousand, but then I passed it and I've raised five thousand dollars so far. So. <laughs> Um, I chose the Ed Foundation so I could help other schools and um, my fellow students. So um, the sneaker fundraiser is basically a way to get our community together and um, raise money while giving back to those who are in need. Um, I partner with Got Sneakers who helps donate shoes to those who need them and recycle the ones not being able to use and keeping it out of the landfill, which helps our environment. Um, I've raised 4,200 for the Ed Foundation altogether. Um, I've, so far I have five different sneaker drives collecting over 1,300 pairs of shoes. And I will continue these drives with the help from my mom, my principal, Mrs. Snow, and my coaches from different sports. I feel that if more students get involved in this cause, together we can raise money while protecting our environment. Um, and also, the, um, with the help from the Ed Foundation, I they put my um, sneaker campaign on the website. So if you want to donate, then you can go to the Ed Foundation website to donate.
And then I have two checks from one is which put it at 4,200 is 3,700. 3, and then the $20. Thank you. Thank you so much for the update. For starting that incredible fundraiser and for really thinking about all of the students and families in our community. We really appreciate it. Right, we are gonna move on to 7A, notice of public hearing on intention of the district to consider entering into an energy conservation services contract. Good evening, everybody. and. Uh... Amy Rufo, our Director of Facilities and Construction, is going to join us tonight, too. We're really pleased to bring this forward to you tonight. This is the culmination of a lot of work done by a lot of folks from both the district and some of our partners. Um, and the instrument we're using to bring forward this project to you is under a design-build model. Um, and so in order to proceed with that, there's a couple of instruments that we need to bring forward to you and the public. Um, the first instrument aimed at Chavez is 4217. Uh, we'll hold a public hearing for that um, to open it up to the public if there's any comments from the public in order for us to proceed with this model. And Amy will share with you the information we work with our partners on that shows uh, how this solar project pays for itself over a period of time and then some. So we're really, really excited about this. The second part of tonight's action you're gonna take is adopting a resolution which acknowledges the 4217 instrument. And the third piece of the puzzle for us, which we are actually working on, we spent a couple hours on it today, is the final contract with our partner, NG. Um, the, the contract itself was presented in our RFP request for proposal. Um, and we have been working with the NG team on some final details for the contract. So this 123 page contract document we've been going through, we're nearly done with it. We thought we'd have it done today with a final session, but we, we're gonna spend a little more time to make sure we have all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. So again, just wanna give you a quick recap of the project. Uh, Amy's gonna go through some slides with you. We're gonna open the public hearing, go through the 4217. We're going to, um, have you um, contemplate adopting this resolution. And we expect hopefully within the next week before the break that we'll be able to finalize the contract. We'll bring the contract to you in January for ratification. And our goal is to have some of these structures completed this summer. So that's where we're at. And so Amy's gonna take it from here and walk you through. Good evening, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Ochoa. Tonight I'll be presenting about our solar PV project and government code 4217 resolution. We'll review our project details, the location of where, we're, where we will be installing solar, our costs, key takeaways, and schedule. We started this project back in June 2021 with the solar feasibility study from the SAGE team. We then followed up in September 2021, uh, showing an investment grade feasibility study. Then in February of this year, we published our first RFP. Unfortunately, there were no proposals received at that time. We went back and revised it to remove uh, any solar on roofs. These are just now solar shade structures. That proposal went out in, in July, and we received two proposals in August. All during this fall, we've been having contract negotiations um, with NG, and during that time, they went ahead and performed soils testings at our school sites. Then bringing us here to, to today for the public hearing and our government resolution. The goals of the project that we set forth was to fit within our Measure T budget, reduce operational costs to the general fund, optimize financial returns, and pave the path for our district's net zero electricity goals. On the left here, we have the sites we started out with our feasibility study in 2021, and they were 18. Today, on the right-hand side, we are at 12 sites. 
Now here on the left, I've highlighted four sites. These are four of our new multi-purpose buildings. We have opportunities to add those roofs into this project through a change order. We have two columns here where we started um, with our original feasibility study and where we're at today in 2022. So we're at 12 sites. Uh, we have a slightly smaller portfolio because we don't have those roofs in the calculations, but because technology is always improving, we're actually able to produce almost the same amount of energy that we originally thought we would. Now, through some of the board updates, I've shared that in August, there was uh, the Investment Reduction Act that will actually allow us to have a $4.6 million savings to the project. Um, that was not in our original calculation since uh, the act was not passed. Um, that then reduces our $15 million cost down to 11.2. We're looking at savings to the general fund over 25 years at 27.3 million. And that gives us a simple payback of 14 years. Key takeaways is that all cost savings go to the general fund. There is an MO agreement that we do need to fund to make sure that our solar shade structures stay in working order. We're at 4.9 million and that the district owns the system. This is not um, a purchase agreement. This is us owning the system. The next steps would be, um, as we mentioned, December, um, hopefully before we leave for break, we execute the contract. Um, so we have our 12 sites. Four of our sites is what we have normal soil. Uh, eight sites, uh, we have bay mud. So <laughs> with these eight sites, we need really deep footings. Those require special engineering. And so due to that, we anticipate being able to build our four pre-check sites. So those are um, pre-check designs that DSA has already approved uh, this summer. And we're anticipating that the other sites that have deep foundations, that those would be built um, by the summer of 2024. Uh, that is the end of the presentation. You can let me know if you have any questions. Amy, if I could just add one quick comment which is um, some of the costs because of the footings you just mentioned. The original uh, anticipated costs was, was based on these pre-check sets of plans, but because we have to do some of these footings down to 50 feet in depth, that's primarily what that increased cost is associated with. You heard Amy mention Bay Mud, and there's other um, projects that uh, this organization has done throughout the, the Bay Area, in which they've had to go down that deep with the footings. So uh, that's what, uh, a large percentage of that cost increase um, is associated with good news is that, as Amy said, we have these investment credits which are going to offset that cost. So essentially the same net cost to us for the project that we had originally anticipated. Okay. Great. Thank you, Patrick and Amy. Uh, turn it over to the board now for clarifying questions. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for the presentation. I do have a question um, of the of the site selection, um, you had mentioned that where we are having our new uh, MPRs, we have an opportunity to add uh, solar on top of those with the change order. Uh, the following chart, where it says the project findings uh, 2021 to 2022, do these, does the, the 2.33 megawatts um, that is projected, do those include the MPR uh, additions or does it not? My, and Amy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but my, my recollection is the, that 2.33 is exclusive of the roofs. Correct. Okay. And if we were to go ahead and add the, the rooftops, do we have the number in terms of what the increase would be for that in terms of the megawatt? I don't have it on my head, Kim, but we can find that out for you for sure. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it'd be great later. Thank you. That's sure. the only question I have, but I have comments later. Thank you. I have a couple questions. Um, my first question is um, on the credit, the 4.6 million, will that go um, back to measure T funds or into the general fund? Because you said savings will go to the general fund. So I think there's a technical, um, I think it's discretionary in terms of we 
put the funds. I don't think I'd put them back into the bond fund, uh, Allison. Uh, um, so um, that's a good question. I, I think, uh, but uh, it's a net net cost. So we may actually do that now that I think about it out loud. So there's a net cost to the bond of only that dollar amount. So that's probably what we'll do. Yeah, because I was just thinking. Um, obviously, since the price went up, or the the cost has gone up, we probably have to like take something away that we're, I mean we are we were already over the amount of funds that measured T um, even provided so if we're take if we're having to spend more I'm just curious if we can put that credit back into the to the projects that we had we originally planned okay. yeah and I'll I'll confirm that with council too but now that I think about it out loud with you Allison I think it's absolutely permissive for us to do that okay and then my second question was um and it's not just because I'm the new trustee area one person, but um, Bowditch is not on this list, and but we're doing a whole bunch of construction there. Well, do you know if Bowditch will include solar, or that's one of the ones that would be added later if it was possible? Amy, can you answer that? Because I sure. All the new buildings are being designed as solar ready, so they can okay. all receive solar. So it is possible to add Bowditch as a change order as well. Okay, thank you. Sorry, just to follow up, when we talk about solar ready, I'm assuming that that means that the buildings are being engineered in a way to support the extra weight of the solar panels. And it already goes through DSA um, for that approval in some ways, right? Is that correct? Correct. And also conduits to the roof and space for inverters and all of that. Fantastic. Thank you. So. Is there other additional questions? Other questions? I was just gonna say if we want, we can open up the public hearing now too. So if there are no other board questions, we will open up for public comment, which will serve as the public hearing for this item. So Forrest, if you could ask for public comment, please. If there are any members in the audience that would like to make public comment in Zoom, please use the raise hand functionality now and you will have three minutes for public comment. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, there are no members in audience that would like to make public comments. Trustee Proctor, back to you. I'll talk I'll to, to President, President Watkins. Watkins. Um, perfect. Um, so that will close public comment and also the public hearing and turn it back over to the board for any comments. So I, I just want to thank you guys for, for all your hard work on this. Um, I am I'm very excited that uh, even though the, the projected cost has gone up, the fact that we actually didn't have any bid the first time around allowed us by just uh, just the timing to be able to um, use the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. And so we're actually able to save money that way. Um, I would definitely like to follow up with what Trustee Proctor had mentioned. Um, I'd love for there to be some sort of discussion about the the savings that we're having. So it's the, I'm just going to that screen. You know, theoretically in 14 years, we'll, we'll save what, $27.3 million, uh, you know, or actually I'm sorry, the payback is, or the break even is 14 years, and, but over the 25 year lifetime, it's, it's basically, it's more than a million dollars a year. Uh, in addition to that, if we go ahead and move forward with adding solar to the new building up outage or the additional ones to the MPRs, you know, we should see an increased savings there. Um, it'd be great for us to have, sort of have a discussion because I know that our, I forget, you'd have to correct me which fund number it is, but our maintenance and operation or, you know, our yeah. facilities funds, you know, we a lot, I think it's something like, it wasn't 200,000, I think it was, was it 2 million, I forget annually, we, cert, we put a certain amount of money into that fund Sure. Or, you know, rainy day things, right? The roof, the drain clogs. Right. I need to replace the floor of the gym. 
you know, a fence falls down a tree, whatever it is, right? That is essentially what we use that for in maintenance and operation. It'd be really interesting to see whether or not the money actually goes back towards, which would be great to go back to the measure T to actually fund more projects out of the facilities master plan, such as, you know, changing carpets to, to hardwood floors or any other projects that weren't on that list. It'd also be great to, to have a discussion about do we, is that rainy day or that facilities fund or maintenance fund enough as well? So um, I, I'd love to sort of have, kind of come back and think about that because with the additional savings, you know, definitely after 14 years, we essentially, you know, pay for itself and, and that cost savings will actually maybe be bigger considering the costs of electricity later on, so. Um, yes, and I'm sorry, I may have misinterpreted the question. Um, oh, I did, okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Did I misinterpret? No. Okay. Um, anyways, I, I, I'm super excited. I, I can't wait for it to happen. Um, yeah, so thank you. I can clarify my comment so that it, there's no misinterpretation. My question was really just specific to the um, 4.6 million credit, which I think you understood um, exactly what I was talking about and just wondering if that could be put back into the project so that we could yeah. do some of the other projects we did plan. Yeah. Um, but thank you for the presentation and sure. for this information. I'm also very excited about, this, about these projects and um, looking forward to hearing more. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I, I misunderstood, but I am in complete agreement with that. And then taking the next step, thinking about where the cost savings comes in and then what we do with those additional funds. So, thank you. I was just gonna suggest, you know, we're gonna wade into the first interim in a little while. So when we come up, when we do next year's board budget guidelines, we'll just add that to the agenda to discuss. Because once those are live, we'll discuss what we wanna do with the savings from the structures. Okay, cool. Any other board comments? Okay, thank you all so much. Yep, thank you. For the presentation, I'm really excited about it as well. We will move on to item 7B, which is the resolu resolution number 192223, approving certain energy conservation measure measures, authorizing the execution of agreements, signatories, and making other determinations in connection therewith. So based on the information you just heard, we've got this resolution in front of you and we're recommending the, the board approve resolution 1922-23. Okay, turn it over to the board for clarifying questions. No clarifying questions. Uh, Forrest, if you can open up public comment on this item, please. At this time, if there are any members in the audience that would like to make a clarifying question, please use the raise hand functionality within Zoom now. Uh, there are no comments on Zoom at this time. Uh, President Watkins, or Vice President Watkins, I turn it over back to you. Great, thanks. Um, all right, any board comments? Uh, if not, I will take a motion. A motion to approve this resolution. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Corso, for the motion and Trustee Proctor for the second. All those in favor, please unmute and say aye. 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 Five yeses. Thank you, everybody. We will move on now to item 7.3, the 22-23 first interim report. Yes, thank you, everybody. And um, I want to thank in advance um, our Director of Fiscal Services, Blanca, for putting together all this information tonight and all of her tremendous hard work on preparing this budget information for us and managing the SACS system. So um, we prepare, provided to you tonight uh, an overall narrative. We provide you the SACS report and we're gonna walk through these slides for you fairly quickly. Uh, this format is similar to formats we presented information to you in the past. We try to capture in the narrative for you in the executive summary uh, some of the highlights of uh, the first interim. 
some of the changes that we did talk about at the end of um, the budget cycle, some additional funding, which is great news for us and school districts throughout the state. Um, and we've highlighted for you as well too, that um, for those additional new sources of funds, we have not put those exact dollars yet into the SACS report for you as of yet, because we need to spend a little more time differentiating how we're gonna spend those dollars. So at second interim, we'll have these things broken down in detail uh, for you. So um, the other item I wanna share with you tonight too is uh, one of the variables which we're monitoring as well too, uh, has to do with special education expenditures. So we try to capture for you what we've seen in terms of the trends for NPSs, NPS providers. Um, we've seen some increases in excess of 20%, and that's a concern for us. So um, as recent as today, um, I, I asked to uh, participate with the SELPA in understanding the process they go through for the negotiations with all these providers. And so I'm on that uh, panel now to have that discussion because to me, in my experience, I've not seen a percentage increase that high year to year from some of these providers. So we need to have more discussion about that as an organization because it's substantial for us in terms of our overall contribution. And we might have to make some adjustments by the time we get the second interim as we get some more clarity on the, the, um, the final expenses. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you through kind of the, the slide deck here, um, where we're at in the cycle. Um, and here at First Center in December 2022, um, we have our audit report, which we'll bring to you for the 21-22 uh, in January. Uh, we just got that from the auditors today. So the next part of our cycle is looking at if there's any adjustments, which we don't understand there's none to make, but uh, that'll come forward to you in January. And the uh, new uh, budget will be introduced in January for the upcoming year. Right? Um, these, this slide highlights for you some of the um, changes which we talked about in a couple of previous sessions too. When the, the legislature passed the budget, um, what's happened to our enrollment? And Noelle, you mentioned a little earlier today, we've seen some decline in our enrollment. Um, and these next couple of bullets capture for each some of those additional resources we're seeing for uh, the current year's budget. So we're gonna integrate those final dollars into the second interim budget. Okay, this budget assumptions page, this is should be a familiar format to you. Again, a quick recap, we're looking at what's happened in our enrollment trends and our ADA, we budgeted conservatively for ADA based on what um, we saw during COVID. Um, we have built into this um, multi-year projection as well too, uh, what our final uh, reduction of FTEs was for the current year. And the 23-24 year, we've got built in some additional reductions. We had initially budgeted a reduction with the adoption budget of 17. We're adjusting that up to 23 based on our decrease in enrollment uh, that's forecasted for next year as well as the decline we saw this year. And then we've also got some conservative property tax growth rates built in here, uh, federal state revenues, mandated block grants, things like that. Okay, so that's a quick recap for you some of those assumptions. Um, this slide captures for you too some of the standard budget items we put in here for step and column increases, our statutory benefits increases, stirs and purrs. Um, Ken, you were talking earlier too about our routine restricted maintenance dollar amount that we spend on, on routine restricted maintenance is captured here and our indirect cost rate. Okay. This slide captures for you too um, the first interim revenues and expenditures and what our um, unrestricted and restricted ending balances are anticipated to be as of June of 23. Uh, the next slide goes into our total revenues and adjustments to those revenues um, at the first interim period of time. Uh, this next slide again goes into expenditures and adjustments um, after we go through all of our open enrollment, our final salaries, people are placed on the salary schedule, our final staffing numbers, those are integrated into these revised numbers at first interim for you as well too. Uh, these multi-year projections are looking at, you know, high level revenues and expenditures and what we expect our ending fund balance to be over this multiple year period of time, um, all looking positive. Um, and on this uh, next slide, we capture for you the unrestricted fund balances over these three year periods of time and what's considered as uh, restricted, um, what's assigned. And it gives you a reference to our total unrestricted general fund dollar amounts and a breakdown of those. Okay, um, and then this, this next slide captures for you, again, the beginning balance for our other funds, um, revenues and expenditures, what are anticipated ending balances for each of these other funds 
for the district as well. Okay. And then again, this recap uh, for center built on recommendations and guidance from the Budget Act, the CDE, the COE, and internal policy. And the next financial report check will be the audit report for 21-22, the annual audit that we brought forward to you in January. And um, all indications from the auditors too, that's all very positive for us as a district as well too. Okay, so that's a quick recap for you of the first center where we're at in the cycle and uh, what the fund balances are looking like for us as well. So we recommend uh, the board, last time we didn't take action, but uh, tonight we're recommending that you take action to approve the first thing as presented to you. And thank you to Blanca. Great, thanks so much, Patrick. Turning it over to the board for any clarifying questions. I have one question. And um, so I was just looking at the statement that shows the unrestricted fund balance. And we talked about this a bit about um, our reserve and it says 3%. Is the stabilization, stabilization arrangement at 3% something totally different or the combined amount is the reserve? So, so the board and your policy, Allison, there's a 3% um, economic uncertainty reserve that districts are required to have. And our board has had in place for some time that your policy is that you are to maintain a 6% reserve. And that's really goes back to being a basic aid district when there's volatility potentially in the property tax base. Um, that's why this district adopted that practice some time ago. So those two combined are 6%. One is the, the economic concern, the other is the other 3%. Thank you so much for the clarification. Okay, if there are no other board clarifying questions, I'll turn it over to Forrest, if you could see if there's any public comment on this item, please. At this time, if there are any members in the audience that would like to make a public comment, please use the raise hand functionality within Zoom now. Okay, we have one member so far that would like to make comment. I'm going to allow them to talk and you will have three minutes to do so. Please start when ready. Randy, you do have permission to talk. Please go ahead and start when ready. Okay, thanks. Uh, good evening. Um, so this is a great presentation, and I just wanted to call out. Uh, can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah, thank you. So I just wanted to call out um, one thing that, um, that Patrick brought up in this uh, budget presentation. Great presentation, by the way. Uh, I really appreciate the clarity. But um, one thing that um, I thought was really interesting was, I believe it was uh, with the 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 um, the note that he took for the the NPS uh, with the NPS, I believe the the twenty percent increase, and I think it's really really great to have um, you know the the budget kind of trigger to um, to to notify on that, and so that. For, you know, this is something that for all of you, for all of your duration on the board, this is something that has been a concern. But to have this notification happen with the budget and not just waiting till the one time a year that you're having um, the, the, uh, the, the special ed report, but that you're noticing it with the, um, with the budget um, and then he's going to um, HR and seeing how that's working. And that and that there's this crosstalk across these various silos, and that it's happening in real time, and still instead of just happening at the end of the year, like oh gee, what's happening, and why is why is this situation? So just kudos to uh, to noticing that and taking action in real time. Okay, thank you for your comment. If there are any other members in the audience that would like to make public comment, please use the raise hand functionality in Zoom now. And there are no other members that would like to make comment. Vice President Watkins, back to you. Great, thank you. Um, any board comment?
Uh, thank you, Patrick, for the presentation. Um, one thing that I wanted to bring up, and this is, I, I don't think we'll ever, maybe if we have a calendar or debrief from the um, California School Board Association Conference, um, I attended a budget uh, discussion or session, and I learned that, you know, we, of course, are required, and we've known this, required to project three years out. Um, but there's some other jurisdictions in the state that actually have like a five-year budget. Um, and I've talked to our um, county superintendent and while they will never check past the years, you know, the idea, and I, I know I sound like a broken record, but the, the idea is that measure V will expire, you know, in 2028, 2027, 2028. And so the thought is, is that it'd be great to know while I don't need to see, because we're only required to sh show three year projections, um, when we talk about maybe it's the next year mm -hmm. or so, when we're, we're actually getting a lot closer to that parcel tax expiration, it'd be great to kind of start seeing some sort of numbers or some sort of projection about what that does um, to our budget. Um, because, you know, I know that we all, including um, supervisor elect, um, Quizzo, worked hard to get Measure V and uh, passed, and so the idea is that you know there is a sunset to that, and it'd be great to kind of understand what that does to us. Um, so it just it isn't like the night before all of a sudden we're like, oh no, we're going to lose you know ten million dollars a year. Um, so thank you. Sounds like you're gearing up to lead another parcel tax campaign, Trustee Chen. <laughs> Any other board comment? Great, so this one is up for a vote. I motion to accept the interim report. Thank you, Trustee Corza, for the motion and Trustee Brooks for the second. All those in favor, please, uh, please unmute and say aye. 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 Thank you. This passes 5 0. Moving on to item eight boy, bo board member statements and requests for future agenda items. So I will. Um, make my final board statement. And again, just wanna thank everyone who has been a part of my journey on this board and um, to all of the little kids whose smile um, lights up the world. Um, you know, I wish all, all of the, the littles the best. Um, I also realized that I forgot to mention and shout out the Sanctuary Task Force that I, um, served on for close to five years and um, specifically um, Phil Rogers for leading much of that work and um, doing so much to support our English learners. Um, thank you to all of our staff, our parents, our kids. Um, welcome to Board Trustee Latisa Brooks, and um, I am so proud of all of the work that we have done here together. And I will be watching in uh, not in a weird, creepy way, but in a supportive, ready to help way. <laughs> um, so uh, please, everyone know that I'm still here to support our community and the work of our district. Thank you. Sorry, so I, I do have just a few things to add and then also just to mention. Um, one thing I thought it was great this week, I want to thank our facilities team and uh, Patrick and Amy. Uh, we were able to go out and celebrate uh, three fields that were open at Meadow Heights, uh, George Hall and Brewer Island. And they, I think what really is the most impactful is to see the kids after the rains that we have had over the last week or so, the last weekend. And where normally you would think like our fields would be completely muddy 
and they would not be usable along with all the other geese species that would be around either on the on the lawns or in, on the blacktop but the smiling faces of the kids and to see them play is was just amazing and so i just wanted to thank the team uh for all of that um i also want to thank uh, superintendent ochoa for being my goalie as we as we played uh, a little bit of soccer there on the field uh and unfortunately i was not able to score against him so uh, we'll have to redo that two times yes twice i tried yes twice um so i want to thank everybody there they look amazing and i can't wait for the other ones to open up um Burrell, along with the rest of the middle schools, I think are having their open houses or sort of like their, their what, I forget what it was called, uh, future student orientations in some ways. Uh, I know that they're doing both uh, in person and uh, virtually, and they're alternating. So I know Burrell had theirs in person last Wednesday, along with a couple other middle schools, and then they're having virtual ones in January. Uh, and I'd just like to say it was it amazing. I want to thank that at least because I was that my daughter will be attending Borel next year. Uh, we attended and it was a packed house in the library. Lots of parents, lots of uh, future students. Uh, and it was great to see them walk through the campus with open eyes as they are going to become incoming uh, sixth graders. Um, so I know that there's a lot of work to, that goes into that. And so I want to thank everybody, all the middle school teams uh, for putting that on because it's it's a great way to showcase, you know, our, our middle schools. Uh, speaking about our middle schools again, I think I was fortunate to attend a PTA meeting where our middle school uh, peer advocates uh, gave us a presentation. And so we have middle school students going to all of our elementary students' uh, schools giving presentations about vaping. And so it's the actual students, the, the uh, middle school students teaching our fourth and fifth graders about the pros and cons of vaping. And I thought that was excellent. And I think it would be great to kind of have them come to the board meeting and, or at least do some sort of presentation to understand what, uh, what's going on and how our own students are teaching our other students and being great role models. Uh, la uh, I, I missed this during our reorg, but I did want to shout out to our former president Proctor. Uh, I wanted to thank her for her year as being president. I think um, coming after COVID, you definitely provided a, a sense of calmness in some of the meetings and, in, and during public comment. And I really appreciate your leadership in, in this past year. So I just want to thank you on that. I also want to welcome our new uh, trustee. Uh, I can't wait. Um, it's, it's very exciting to have a new person here next to me instead of an empty seat. And so I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the years of service uh, together. And lastly, I just want to wish everybody happy holidays. This is our last meeting before the uh, winter break. And um, I hope that everybody gets some rest and some well-deserved time with their families. Um, so, um, so happy holidays. Um, I had a couple of <clears throat> comments, excuse me. Um, one is also appreciated going to see the new fields this week. So thank you for um, inviting us. And it was really great to see. And we got to talk to a PE teacher at Brewer Island that was just so grateful and um, appreciative. So that was great. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, uh, I think most of us attended either in person or virtually the San Mateo City Council meetings. And then I went to the Foster City City Council meeting. So we have some new um, council members in both cities that we'll have to get to know and um, look forward to working with, uh, with both cities there. So hopefully we will be uh, collaborating soon. And then I also want to welcome uh, Trustee Brooke. We, we are both rot Rotarians together in Foster City. So um, it's nice to see you in a different capacity also and get to, a chance to work together. Oh, and we spend a lot of time at Sea Cloud Park uh, ch chatting because we're there all the time also. So I'm looking forward to working with you. And then um, I'm glad that we are all back together before the end of the year. And again, want to wish Trustee Corzo good luck and wish everybody happy holidays. And um, it seems like everybody's getting sick. So everybody just stay safe and healthy and see each other in the new year. Um, we'll also wish everyone a happy holiday and a wonderful break. Um, and hoping that um, 
as a district, we, uh, if we're not already planning to do so, can just send out some reminders about health and safety over the break. Um, I know that, um, you know, there's a lot of things going around right now and lots of kids um, are really sick. And so just encouraging everyone, as many have already said, just to be safe and take precautions. COVID is, there's that's one piece of it, but lots of other things going on right now and lots of kids getting really, really sick. So um, also thank you, Trustee Proctor, for your service as president and for handing over, <laughs> uh, passing the torch. Um, and welcome to Trustee Brooks. Really looking forward to getting to know you better and to working together. Um, another bittersweet goodbye to Trustee Proctor or Trustee Corzo and Supervisor <laughs> Elect Corzo. Sorry. Um, two other things in terms of future agenda items slash things I just wanted to um, share. I would like to. So there are two. Uh, organizations that I'm aware of um, that essentially support uh, innovative, exceptional superintendents and education leaders, one of which requires nomination, which is an organization called Chiefs for Change. Um, it's a group of leaders that specifically advocate for policies and practices that kind of move the national conversation on education um, and like with the goal of fundamentally making a difference for students. So if our board is amenable to nominating Superintendent Ochoa, I would like to bring that back as something that we discuss. Um, there's another organization that's through a data uh, nonprofit, I guess you can call it, that's actually based locally in Redwood City called Digital Promise. And they have a group of superintendents called League of Innovative Schools. It's a little bit more like practice focused um, and folks that are using data and like and technology in very strategic and innovative ways. That's a larger group of individuals. And so that's something that Superintendent Ocho can apply directly to that I've encouraged him to do, but potentially we can bring that and write a letter and support in addition. Um, I just think, you know, we're doing a lot of exciting work and there's um, Superintendent Ochoa's you know, brought a lot to our district. And I think that these are organizations or there would be additional collaborate, uh, collaborative opportunities um, with uh, other leaders. So just wanted to kind of gauge, gauge. So I see lots of nods. So that's something that we can bring at a future uh, agenda. Any other board member statements? Right. Well, today I just want to thank you all for the welcome, the warm welcome. I am excited to be here and I am looking forward to this journey uh, and being here with you guys. Noelia, our short time together here, I wanna congratulate you on your new journey. Um, but the advice you have given me has stuck with me and I wanna thank you for that. Thank you, Allison. Sure, I'm looking forward to working with you. Uh, future meeting dates. We have a regular school board meeting January 26th and a special board study session focusing on student discipline and January 12th. And that will be both will be at 5 30 p.m. here on the board. Thank you. Um, now open a public comment on closed session items before we recess to closed session. Sorry. Ah, I was muted. Okay. I am now opening up public comment for public public comment on closed session items before we recess to closed session. Forrest, if you could see if there's any public comment, please. Yes, at this time, if there are any members in the audience that would like to make public comment, please use the raise hand functionality within Zoom now. There are no members in the audience that would like to make public comment. I pass it back to you, President Watkins. Thanks so much. All right, we are now going to recess to closed session. Thank you, everybody. All right, we are reconvening to open session with two things to report out of closed session. The board took action by a vote of 
5-0 to approve um, one case and also took action by a vote of 5-0 to approve case number 20220090812. Uh, we will now move to adjourn this meeting. Oh, I motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. My final motion. I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Corzo for the motion and Trustee Proctor for the second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are now adjourned at 824. Good night, everybody. Wait, nobody move. Oh. You want me to take a screenshot? Yes. Hold on. Ready? Everyone get in. Should I just do like this? Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs>